most famous physical therapist on the internet. Hi, I'm Bob Shrupp, physical therapist. Brad Handy, physical therapist. Together we are the most famous physical therapist on the internet. In our opinion, of course. Brad, Bob. if you've been diagnosed with spondylolisthesis, success starts here. Say no more, Bob. And you have been diagnosed, so you're, yeah. the, you're the expert here. Well, yeah, I wouldn't know if I'm the expert, but uh, I've had a lot of luck with, with mine and uh, learned a lot about it, obviously, for personal reasons, and it's, it's our profession, Bob. Yeah, so well, I think you've done a great job with it, Brad, really. Yeah. You're it, a really it, active guy. And it, uh, yeah, it's been uh, exciting. If you have it, don't get too worried about it, okay? Chances are uh, there's a lot of people that have it that aren't even aware of sure. it. Sure. And there's an estimated 5 to 7% of the people in the United States have it. That means... 15 to 20 million people. Have, that's a lot. Right. That's a, that's a heck of a lot. Right. So, yeah. what is it? Um, well, do you want me to start with that, Brad, or sure. are you going to talk? Well, we're talking, now you can have spinal thesis, which that term, big one, it's a Greek term. Uh, they came up about it in 1854, and you know what it means? Vertebra and then slipped or a slip okay, which makes sense because right. that's exactly it's what's a slip happened vertebra if you look and it can happen anywhere along the spine typically in the lumbar spine or in the neck probably lumbar most is of the low time. back yep lumbar low back is for most of the time is and we can't do this because this is all stuck together with a rod going down the middle but one of the vertebra usually l4 l5 the ones in your low back l5 s1 Way down here at the belt line. Here they are. We pull them out. Okay, so L4, L5, this is where mine is. It shifts, and it actually moves. So this moves forward like that. Right. It's, it's, it's like it's going to get uh, cut right off, and it yeah. amazes me that it doesn't hurt more than it does or cause the paralysis. Spinal cord. You know, it right. seems like it would irritate the spine so bad you wouldn't be able to walk. But again, this is, shows how the body does adapt to things. Exactly and, and, right, and Bob. And deals with it. So. And if you're diagnosed with this, they're going to give you grade 1, grade 2, grade 3, or grade 4. Grade 1, grade 2, grade 3, what, grade 4 falls off? Well, yeah, not quite, <laughs> but if you're at grade 4, that's pretty serious. Sure. Vast majority of people, as a matter of fact, 90% are grade 2 or less. Okay, and that's where you're at. Right. Okay, right. and you were going to show your x-rays real yeah. quick, Fred? Yeah, so if you got x-rays, you know, and if you get x-rays, at least in a hospital in the United States, Tell them you want to get copies of it so you can yeah. have a history yourself. Have, they all print them out for you now. A yeah, time. actually, I got a disc and I printed them off off the disc um, because if you want to get another opinion, they don't have to take another x rays. You right. can take that with you. Exactly. And that's exactly what I did. I went to three different doctors to get opinions on this. Now, if, if you're not, you might have to come in I'd on come, this. I'd go up to her. Okay. So we're looking at the side, it's a lateral view. So you're going to stand there and then x-ray from this side and they're going to see the separation of the vertebra. Which page do you want, Brad? All right. So here we got the x-ray and they're kind of hard to read and see. So what I'm going to do Back. is... Oh, that's okay. That's okay. As I outline the vertebra. So it's much easier to see. You can see the hip is down here, my sacrum, L4 and L5. And this is not a pretty picture at all because L4 disc is shaped like a wedge, which is not normal. I don't like that. Oh, L5 is. L5, between yeah. L5 and, thank you. Yeah. And then, but L4 and L5, you can see the shift. Yeah. This should be lined up with this, and there's no disc in there, right. Bob. I've got no disc there. They've naturally fused. Right. I've, yeah. sh I've shrunk. Yeah. Now, if you go back and you look at the full picture, L2, L3, here's a big space. See, there's a disc. normal space in between. Yep, and then you go between there, you see the shift is forward. There's the, the disc has just taken care of itself over time. And I remember I had back pain for about two years. I was self-treating, I could manage it. And I have a feeling that's when this big shift took place. I don't sure. know, just a theory. Uh, but anyways, the idea is that this fuses together and we support this with muscles from your body, okay? And it's going to be muscles in the front part of your body, your stomach muscles and your hip muscles that flex the hip all support that, okay? Strengthening all the core muscles, basically, exactly. right? Exactly. But in one direction, well, not just one, but primarily anterior right. or the front. Right, right. Well, I'll let you go on, Fred, because there's things we want to avoid and there's things you want to go ahead well, and do. Well, and right? we can go to symptoms on this. If you've got this, I bet you 10 to 1 that if you're, and this is, this is with me, if I'm out shopping with my wife 
and she's doing her job of shopping. I'm getting bored, standing there for 10 or 15 minutes. Oh, it's no fun. It's killer. It, it starts to hurt here. Sometimes I get it down my leg because I got that nerve gets pinched a little bit. But the good news is you get out of shopping. No, <laughs> I sit down and the pain goes right. away very quickly. Right. Very happy then. Then she can shop more and it doesn't bother me. I need a place to sit though. Sure. And it doesn't, it doesn't have to be shopping. Any static position, any static position just standing will typically be very uncomfortable. I find if I do this, it helps, but sitting always, always makes me feel much better. So that's a good idea actually is to find a chair and mm -hmm. just put your foot up on it to give yourself some yep. relief if you have to stand, right? right? Yep. yep, and you can try that. If you're working overhead, if you're washing the ceiling, you're going to get a backache. Sure. It's not fun. Uh, it's not good for your, I mean, if you want to, if you're in a, if you're not solid there. You yeah, could, you don't want things to slip more. Right. And causing more problems. Right. Get that grade three or grade four. So avoid, exactly. avoid overhead work. Yeah. Okay. These are the things to avoid. Right. Extension, overhead work. What else, Fred? Shopping? Standing? <laughs> <laughs> so, or laying on your stomach. Typically, that's not going to be comfortable. Right. Yeah, that's a, a, a position. You're, you're going to be maybe even have a slight bend when you're sleeping, right? Right. When you lay on your side. Yeah. And well, actually, I cannot lay on my sides either. I lay on my side for five or ten minutes. It's uncomfortable. The only position I can sleep comfortably is on my back, and if I put my feet, feet up. up. Either, okay. yep, I put my legs on top of my wife or on a pillow. Okay. Just kidding. <laughs> well, but if you bring your legs up, much more comfortable, typically. Okay. And we've done, uh, we just did a video on bed positioning, and we've showed that, how you can take a wedge or a pillows and put them underneath your feet. Right, you're laying exactly. Your Could you so. connect one of those up yep, at the end? Yep, I will at Excellent. the end. Okay. Stay till the end and you'll get this. <laughs> All, All right. right. Uh, Things you should do is... Well, no, planks. You said planks, sir? You know, this is something, you no know, planks. Why don't yeah. you do one, Bob? Sure. This is the biggest craze on abdominal strengthening in the last five or ten years is to do planks. And I agree, they definitely work the core, but I cannot do this. I've tried these, I'm going to stick kind of through it. You know? myself. Yeah, look at them shake. <laughs> but the next day, for, for a few days, I was sore. My back was sore, and I said, Interesting. no more planks for me. Okay. So I have, I'm quite certain this has to do with the spondy diagnosis. Sure. I mean, us spondies, we got to stick together. So That's right, yeah. spondies unite. Now, we've got some, I got three videos on exercises, and if you have this, and it goes through them in detail, I think, for me, the best thing that works is the ball. Sure. You got, you got the exercise I'll, ball. I'm going to hook that one at the end, too. So, uh, and all the three videos. I'll sure. find them all. Yep. And um, apparently you want to avoid heavy lifting, too, right, Brad? Right. Any extremes. Heavy lifting, standing in one place for a long time. So you're not going to help me move if I'm... No. Uh, <laughs> no. As a matter of fact, <laughs> my daughter was moving, and I told him, I'll yeah. help with the little stuff. But, and even the little stuff... You got to be Which careful. Which brings me to a really good point about back pain. You've really got to learn to say no. Right. I mean, seriously. I mean, you're not going to do anybody any good if you become so disabled you can't even get out of a chair. Exactly. So. Oh, one other thing that I think has helped with mine, because with mine, there was a period of two or three years I could walk three fourths of a mile because I have it on my road. I kind of marked off. My leg would start getting numb because the nerve was getting pinched. And now I can walk three miles. And what did you do No symptoms. Just doing the exercises on the videos coming up. Okay. And swimming. I swim two to three days a week. I don't know if that has a lot to do with it, but I'm sure it's not making What kind it. of strokes do you do with the swimming? Well, mostly just the crawl. Okay. Yeah. And the breaststroke I do, but that hurts my back. I was going to say, obviously. that would probably hurt. Right. Yeah. So, and if you swim right, that's a whole other story. The swimmers in the crowd, they can enjoy this. Everyone else will say, it. who cares about that? So, um, you're going to talk about the things you can do, and, and we're going to show some of those in the videos, but... Abdominal strengthening is really good, right. you had mentioned. Um, supine or laying on your back, ab work. Right, right. So. And these are all in the videos. And when you do exercise, the big thing is they should not hurt. Right. They should actually feel good. Right. All the exercises. It's not a no pain, no gain. Right. This is a no pain, no you, pain. You can get the muscles to hurt from, ex from, from fatigue, soreness. Yeah. But your back, your spine should feel pain free. Yep. So. And you talked about the swimming and uh, flex stretching. Is that what the last one is, Brad? Stretching? Yeah. Well, of course, Bob. Let's so. move. This almost, like if I've been standing, this feels good. This usually even feels better. Oh, sure. It's like, oh, and I'm not going to hang out here for 20 minutes, but I'll stretch like this for about 30 seconds at the most, 15, 30 seconds, a couple reps maybe. 
and you just go by how your body feels. You know when you've had enough. It's like it, it's it's good. It's not getting any better, and then you stop that stretch. Right, and and that can make you allow you to go on then throughout the day here. So this is all right. ways to manage pain. Yeah, you know? it's interesting because I can go out through a day, and if I'm moving up and down, even at home doing lawn work, I'm okay as long as I'm within reason. And you get to know your body. You know, if I'm lifting up something heavy some like some wood that I shouldn't be lifting and I got an yeah. awkward position it's like listen to your body because yeah, be, it'll it'll teach you a lesson be smart all right. the videos all should be starting to come up here so oh, oh, we oh, have oh, the oh, popping oh. all right thanks for watching